All right. So I told you today that I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about Aaron Schwartz. Schwartz. Well, see, he doesn't have the C-H in his name, which is why I figured maybe it wasn't pronounced Schwartz. But yeah. let's pronounce it Aaron Schwartz because that's going to yeah. be easier to remember. Schwartz. Um, Schwartz. Yeah. Quick, for anybody who's watching, uh, basically the idea behind this is that Aaron Schwartz, uh, he was not a co-founder of Reddit.com, but his no. company was bought by Reddit. So he was there in the early days of that. He actually, when he was 14 years old, um, uh, contributed to the RSS spec. So he's quite <laughs> the geek and uh, from a very early age. He's in his 20s. 24. 24 years 10 old. 10 years ago, he's right. contributing to RSS spec. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, at this point, he's working with a group called Demand Progress. And Demand Progress um, is, I guess, a lobby type group. I don't know that they're nonprofit. I don't think they are. Uh, but um, anyway, he, basically, what happened is he's been. Did in, he start Demand Progress? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. He's the founder of Demand Progress, and he's been in, indicted by the feds on charges for. Um, oh gosh, I can. Yeah, let's listen though. Those let's charges are really interesting. Yeah. So well, what's interesting, I printed out two different articles, and one of them is the New York Times, and the other is the press release from Demand Progress. <laughs> and the terminology is really different the way that they lay things out. So, New York Times uh, says, indicted on charges that he stole more than four million documents from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, and JSTOR, uh, the Archive of Scientific Journals. Um, he could face charges of 35 years in prison, and a one million dollar fine. Mm -hmm. So, the basic, I'd take the one million dollar fine any day over thirty five years. Yeah. Well, I assume he has or some, both. Yeah, I assume stuff. he has some money. And the interesting thing is that he's actually a fellow at um, the Harvard Graduate School as a uh, professor of ethics. Huh. Awesome. So, so I think his idea is that he's trying to make a point about the idea, uh, the legality mm -hmm. of taking a large number of documents from online. Yeah, you know, yeah. the the feds are calling this stealing. They're outright saying that bits and bytes are no different than taking a crowbar to someone's house and stealing something, whether you use a piece of command line code or whether you use something else. That's right. Now, Demand Progress, their report says, federal government indicts former Demand Progress executive director for downloading too many journal articles. <laughs> so. Just too many. They say Four million is just too many. You're right. never going to read them. It's the, wasteful. The director, David Seagal, says this makes no sense. It's like trying to put someone in jail for allegedly checking out too many books from the library, <laughs> which it's That's interesting. Great. He was actually using the library at MIT, so they give guest users access to the databases. But what about this idea of like him breaking into a server closet that yeah. people had said? Like, is that true? Like, it it is, is true. That? It is true. What he did was he purchased a laptop for the sole purpose of having that run scripts that would download mass amounts of articles. Uh, for a while, he was just doing it in the library, I think, and then he actually broke into the network closet, hooked the laptop directly to their network because he was having trouble bypassing the network authentication. So he would have to continually go in there, give himself a ghost name, uh, and then you know they would find out the MAC address, they'd block it, he'd spoof another MAC address. So he was clearly superseding all of the rules in place by MIT. By their network use policy. By their, by their network use policy and, yeah. and probably the terms of service for JSTOR, I'm sure, sure have limits to you know how many articles you can download, things like yeah. that. Sure. The question is... There have to be limits. Yeah, right. But the question mm -hmm. is, a federal indictment, 30 years in prison, a million dollars in charges, for breaking terms of service. Yeah, well, it's interesting. And I, the only thing I could probably contribute at all to this conversation, mm -hmm. if anything, mm -hmm. is this. I don't know anything about terms of service and all that legal stuff, so I'm going to stay away right. from that. Uh, network use policy and the breaking into the server room, well, that's kind of its own thing. I don't know if that's 30 years. Right. That's the other thing. Or felony charges. Yeah. I mean, that's a big thing, too, whether felony versus misdemeanor and things, what the level at which you take this. A felony charge can pretty much ruin you in terms of mass employment. I mean, you know, for someone like him who's... He'll be fine. He'll yeah. Probably. Well, he'll probably... I mean, this is going to be a cause celeb, too, right? Yeah. Like, there is going to be... It's already at that level. Mm -hmm. And he... You know, it seems like the Attorney General, at least from the, the the comments she made in the New York Times article, she's gunning for him. Yeah. Like, there's a, this is a high-profile case. Yeah. But one of the things that's interesting to me, and it reminds me of 
if I could bring this back to the open end, because he's an academic, or at least part of the academic community. Right. He went on and tried to download like four million journal articles from JSTOR with the idea that he was going to put them online freely. Right. Which is stepping over a line, absolutely. Yeah. And it's absolutely challenging that. And mm -hmm. if this is a kind of question of him stepping up and say, look, you know, I think that this is so important that the world's research be out in the open, then I'll go to prison over it. Mm -hmm. This is a kind of something that people had said we should do with downloading of music and video. But it's, it's, if that's the case, he's smart. Because you're not going to really feel bad for people who went and downloaded all the archive of iTunes, like Beatles or whatever right. they have, and said, look, I'm standing up for what's right. You're not going to get the same kind of compassion. But research mm -hmm. that the actual researchers rarely, if ever, get paid for. Right. And the only people who make the money are the journals. Yeah. Then you're in a very particular side. Are you hurting the researchers here? No. Mm -hmm. Are you hurting the journals? Well, maybe, but they're screwed anyway, given the new publishing model. Right. So he's really making a point, and it's almost like we're coming up with all these charges, like he broke into a server closet, or he tried to download too many documents, or, mm -hmm. you know, he worked. But the point, I think, maybe, and I don't know, is... He's trying to basically say, you know, it's absurd that all of the world's research is locked up behind right. these servers, mm -hmm. and four million articles later, we still can't come up with it. And if you were to try and make it open and freely available, you'd be sentenced to prison. Yeah. And that's this whole kind of Thoreauian stand, possibly, mm -hmm. of like, you know, I find it, you know, absurd that we're doing it, that our culture reinforces it. And that's how I like to look at it on the most ideal. Yeah. It's like he's kind of coming in and finally one of those people is willing to step up and take a stand and say, let's bring this to court. Right. See where this goes. It, he'll be the fall guy if he, it, you know, if it comes to that. And it, he probably could afford to be to some degree. Exactly. He could afford some legal representation, yeah. which we didn't see with the 8-bit one exactly. for that. That's exactly what I was going to say. The yeah. whole bit with Andy Bayo where, you yeah. know, he couldn't afford really to take that copyright claim to court That's right. uh, with the Kind of Blue album That's right. cover. So, and what's interesting with this, I actually read, was that JSTOR is okay with them. He, re yeah. he returned all the documents to them. He said, you know, I'm, no. sorry, I'm sorry that this was against your terms of service. I mean, this is what I'm reading anyway, is that they have asked to press no charges and they've asked the government to do the same. The government said, yeah, that's all fine and good. We're still going after him. That's right. You know? I read that same thing, that the actual publications didn't want to press charges. Now, I don't know about MIT, whether MIT was looking yeah. to press charges. But, but JSTOR didn't. Yeah, and so odd. then so then you separate that part of it and you go, okay, what's MIT going to charge him for? Breaking and entering of a locked network closet? I mean, yeah. at what point? I mean, how it, uh, is it going to be a felony charge? how does this with their open courseware idea? Yeah. You know, put all your stuff out there in the open. Right. I well, mean, and it's interesting, too, because it's like just when you were going back to the uh, this idea that people don't really get paid for these research articles, a lot of times in academics, they're used as a boost for getting better jobs or getting raises yeah. and things like that. So the people who are paying for them are libraries and they're people that can afford to pay for them. Yeah. And his idea is you put it out on the open web and then people in third world countries who never would have had access to it now have access to it. It's, I mean, it's, it kind of comes know. down to an open access debate. Yeah. Like giving access and, you know, is it actually ethical if you take unethical means to try and do the most good for the most people? Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's part of the whole ethics course. It's interesting. I didn't know he's teaching an ethics course. That's a fascinating yeah. twist. On I don't that. know that he's actually teaching. It says he's a Harvard fellow, so I'm not sure what that defines him as. Um, but anyway, I don't, yeah. and I don't know that that was his ability to get on the network or whether it really was just guest access. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they lay out a ton of charges, and, you know, the real question just comes down to are breaking terms of service when a company puts out documents online and says this is how you're going to access them, yeah. but you're accessing them in a way that they've defined as okay. You're going through a library who has paid for these articles, and they're saying, well, you downloaded too many. That's right. That's that's not okay. That's yeah. Is, you stepped over the line. You know, I I feel like it's probably somewhere in the middle. It's not quite demand progress who says he's basically being charged with downloading too much. Well, that's all fine and dandy except for the fact that, you know, in terms of like when I use Spotify, okay, that's one thing to just use their service to play songs, but if I write scripts to where I can download the actual files from their website or yeah. you know, at you know and have those four several thousand per minute. 
The other ar- the other argument that I thought was interesting, and I, I don't want to really go th- down that road too much, was th- this fact that in order for JSTOR to stop this from happening, they had to cut off MIT's access to their entire database articles. So then it's not just yeah. Aaron Sw- Schwartz that doesn't have access to those articles, but every other academic at MIT had no access to those and articles. what would they do for, for a day? It was months that they did months two they two months they didn't have access to JSTOR because they were trying to pinpoint where the <laughs> where the leak was coming from. So how long has he been doing this? He uh, ooh. I'm so not he really had a sure. computer on in a server closet for maybe it's, weeks it's, or months it's trying start, to do this? It started last year, I think in September of last year, around uh, I think from uh, November and December they had it completely cut off at the university. Uh, because they couldn't nail down what MAC address, where it was coming from. So, so then you get into the argument, okay, okay, well, all these other students, they were unable to do their research. If you were That's in right. a graduate program and you found out that this guy is the reason that you weren't able to complete your thesis on time because you didn't have access to those articles yeah. because he was over there trying to, I mean. Well, he would turn around and say, Is hey, it worth it? If it were all open and online, we wouldn't have this issue, right? Sure. Of one company being able to basically say to a university, yeah. you can't access anything until we figure out what's going on. Right. Now, obviously, that's kind in, of, in the, that's like the mafia, right? Right. Uh, well, in the, in the whole idea, I mean, in the long term, yeah, it's probably worth it. But in the short term, you know, it really screws you as a person Absolutely. over. And, and for people who are trying to fight for these fair access things to, to get these journals to open up their, con- or not the journals, but pay- people like JSTOR to open up their databases of um, things, they feel like this is a setback for them. Be- yeah. The reason they feel like it's a setback is because you take this young guy who, you know, broke into a network closet, hooked up a laptop, and pretty much did it, I guess you would say, nefariously. He was, you know, they are able then at that point the government can lump them in with you know oh these young hackers they basically right. do anonymous this, this is why we have to keep these things closed well, notice that they had that there That's was a big breaking say. story in central florida the university of central florida where they the fbi and the government raided a, a dorm at central florida for one of the members supposedly of anonymous right so linking in him with anonymous would be interesting but what's so fascinating to me and this is true of some anonymous whatever anonymous is mm-hmm. but what's interesting about the schwartz case in my mind, is he has absolutely nothing to gain unless you take it really cynically like he just wants to be a kind of high-profile dude. Right. But like he got millions of journal articles with the idea of putting them online. He's not going to make money off of it, at least directly from the journal articles. He's not like he was going into bank accounts. Like he was just trying to make these journal articles, put them out. They're not directly hurting the authors of the article. Right. It is maybe hurting JSTOR, but JSTOR doesn't want to sue yeah. for damages. Right. They're good at this point. So what are we talking about here? It's yeah. like this weird case. And, you know, if you're really cynical, you think, oh, he's just trying to get on the headlines and stuff. Well, no. I mean, the kid's taking a chance. He's not a kid. He's 24. But he's taking a chance. I mean, 35 years, I don't care how you know, much money you have or how tough you think you are. When someone says to you, and, you know, America's great at this. Everybody's in a prison, it seems, in America. But when America says to you, you got 35 years or a million dollar fine, I'd be scared shit. Yeah. Because, you know, this is a well, prison state. But I wondered if now the government is kind of going, oh, shit, like, we didn't expect him to become, you know. I mean, this is a high-profile dude, and, you know, he's got a lot of backers online. I wonder if they didn't expect this level of involvement to the point where it might backfire on them. Well, the district attorney, I mean, you know, here's the Obama, right, Appo- appointed, you know, the district attorney. Yeah. You know, I have a feeling, I think this is pretty established at this point, that, the Democrats are in the in the hands of the lobbyists for entertainment, publishing, and all that right. stuff. So we'll see how it plays out. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, and I want to think maybe this person stood up. Although, you know, what could be less sexy than academic articles? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like really. Yeah. I don't know. Well, here's hoping that's a, it's a win for open web and a loss for you know federal indictments over you know ridiculous causes. Yeah, we'll see. Well, so. that was. That was solid. Yeah. 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. DTLT. All right. DTLT today. We'll be back again tomorrow, as always. If we're not in prison. Right. <laughs>